Every morning at this hotel, they make you walk to the front desk just to get the day's Wi-Fi code. It's a random four digit code that resets every 24 hours. And honestly, I didn't feel like doing that walk every single day. That's when it hit me. Why not use my coding knowledge to figure it out myself? It's just a four digit number. There's only 10,000 possible combinations. Easy enough for a script to handle. So I started digging into how their system works behind the scenes. To figure out how the hotel's Wi-Fi login worked, I opened my browser's developer tools and started sniffing traffic. Every time I tried to connect, I could see the network request firing in the background. One request immediately caught my attention. Slash API slash captive portal slash access slash logon slash zero. It was sending a username and a password to the server. The username was a four digit number. The password, it was static, just wired to Wi-Fi every time. Failed attempts come back with client state not authorized. No surprise here. But when I used the real code from the front desk, the response changed. A successful login returned client state authorized and set obsession cookie. That's when it hit me. The username was just the four digit code and there are only 10,000 possibilities. To replicate this in Python, I need to send a post request with the correct headers, payload, and cookies so it looked like a real browser. If I could automate this, I'd never have to ask for the code again. Once I figured out how the API worked, I started thinking about how I could automate the whole process of getting the daily code. The idea was pretty straightforward. I'd write a Python script that would try every possible four digit code from 00000 to 99999 and send it to the server until it got the right one. So here's how it works under the hood. First, I tell Python to loop through every number between 0 and 99999. For each number, I make sure it's formatted as a four digit string. So for example, if the number is 23, it gets padded into 0023. This is important because the server expects a full four digit username every time. Next, I define the request. The username is the four digit number and the password is set to wire to Wi-Fi, since that's the fixed password that the hotel uses. Then I sent this as a post request to the API endpoint I discovered earlier. Every time the server responds, I check the body of the response for a specific keyword, authorized. If I see that word, I know the code worked and the script stops. Otherwise, it just keeps trying the next number in the sequence. This worked, but there was one big problem. Sending one request at a time like this is painfully slow. At about one or two attempts per second, going through all 10,000 possible codes would take hours. That's fine if you're patient, but I wanted this to finish in minutes. So I decided to make it smarter and much, much faster. This is where threading and concurrency come into play. After building the basic version, I realized something interesting. The hotel doesn't just use one code per day. Instead, there are multiple four digit codes that work at the same time. That meant my script couldn't just stop after finding one. It needed to power through all 10,000 possibilities and collect every valid code. This was the perfect excuse to bring in some of the concepts I learned in my operating systems class at UF. Things like concurrency, event loops, and semaphores. So I reworked the script using Python's asyncio library to fire off hundreds of requests simultaneously. Here's how it works. Imagine there's a giant club with a bouncer at the door. Every time I send a post request, it's like handing the bouncer a four digit code and asking, does this get me in? If the bouncer says client state authorized, that's a win. We know this code works. But I didn't want to overwhelm the server by sending all 10,000 people to the door at once. That's where the semaphore comes in. It's like having the bouncer only let 100 people, but in my case, 50 people into the line at a time. As soon as one person is checked, another takes their place, keeping things fast but controlled. I then created a task for every possible code from 00000 to 9999 using asyncio.create underscore tasks. These tasks run concurrently, meaning while one person is waiting for the bouncer to respond, the rest of the line keeps moving. Once all the tasks are created, asyncio.gather waits for them to finish. And here's the twist. I didn't stop at the first success. Every time the bouncer said, yep, that one's good, the script added the code to a list. By the end, I had collected all the working codes for the day. So what did we learn? With a little bit of coding knowledge, some creative thinking, and tools like Python's asyncio, you can automate things you'd normally do manually like grabbing the hotel's Wi-Fi codes without having to go to the front desk every morning. If you enjoyed this breakdown, 
hit that like button, subscribe for more wild coding experiments, and let me know in the comments what you want to see me break. Uh, I mean, build next. <laughs>